indeed, I am a professor in bioinformatics, but uh, I'm located at the university at the Institute of Computer Science or in the Computer Science Department, uh, which I'm heading. So I have the luxury of getting all the computational people in and software developers as well. And, and we have indeed um, um, been working on the biological data as well as a lot of research now on, on health data side. And uh, yes, so um, just a small recap. Uh, Estonia is a small country. Uh, some believe that's why we can implement things that we have only 1.3 million people. Uh, although big areas as Netherlands, the same area, but it's it's sometimes the small scale that helps uh, to achieve things. So some things are centralized more easily than in very large countries. Um, Biobank was established by Andres Metzpalu's great vision uh, towards the end of the century, last century. Um, and uh, 2002, it was really kickstarted. That's when I myself repatriated to Estonia uh, with the goal of uh, helping Biobank set up. So back then, 50,000 individuals were collected, uh, blood samples, DNA extracted, etc., waiting for new technologies to come by that allow, allow us to make sense out of this DNA. Um, as you can see, then there was a kind of break in the collection of data, but the research was beefed up uh, based on the biobank content. And, and then later, a couple of years ago, additional 150,000 individuals were collected uh, and now relying totally on the health data coming from the health IT systems that Kalle Killer already briefly uh, touched upon. Um, all this process has been really um, based on the research um, at the end of last century, Andres was instrumental in setting up some SNP genotyping technologies. We were all already partnering in early um, genotyping of chromosomes and analysis. So that has helped to lay the ground uh, for this ge genomic pro uh, project really. And now we are at the stage where we uh, really ask how to deliver that to the healthcare system. So in Estonia, as many Nordic countries and other places, we have IDs of individuals, numeric ID, but also the electronic identity uh, that again, Kalle Giller touched upon so that we can safely, um, securely interact with the information systems and we can identify individuals, um, give signatures, um, at consents, et cetera. So this indeed is one of the cornerstones. And, and then the, as the databases are linked, it makes it easier to provide services nationwide because you can plug in the new service and it will be automatically, well, of course not automatically, but relatively easily linked to the other parties. If you provide good service, uh, then the other partners uh, or mm, can actually tap into that service because you can query by the ID, you can query by the same technology. So it's really just agreeing on the format that flows in there, uh, the content that flows in there, and then you can uh, add these new services. That's why we believe that we can really uh, develop the system that brings the service to the clinicians and uh, patients uh, themselves. Um, and now uh, summarizing what I have just said is that over the nearly 20 years, the biobank has been set up for their primarily research purposes. So collecting DNA samples, health data for um, all the research going on. And now we are in the stage asking how to deliver that to the uh, medical service. And the process uh, that we envision is that we export the relevant data to the medical side of the uh, databases, so to speak, from the research to the medical service use. Uh, there are lots of questions how uh, whether the data was obtained by the relevant technologies, uh, the quality management, all of these, but this turns the data for the medical use um, 
So this is this is crucial step, and that would happen by the consent of the individual who originally consented for research, and now they would need to uh, show the willingness of taking that research data to the medical use. But of course, the other regulations will also be um, affecting that whether all the research was done properly at the same quality level. So once the data is in this medical use uh, DNA storage, uh, then we envision that when, when you want to calculate something based on this uh, genetic data, risk scores, pharmacogenetic, that we provide the safe haven uh, for this compute uh, storage, well, compute area, where validated medical devices or software pieces uh, can be installed and this compute environment would request the necessary input data from the uh, genetic database possibly from the health data system bring all this data available to the medical device that then can calculate whatever is needed and then the uh, lab uh, running this compute environment would uh, send it back to the health information system as reports, machine readable and human readable re reports. And these uh, reports can then further be processed by the clinical decision support systems, electronic health records of the hospitals where doctors interact with. So in this way, if there is some new service and requirement to calculate some risks, then the um, order purchase order goes back to the lab uh, they will fetch the relevant dna get back the reply uh, store that in health information system centralized and bring to the medical doctor uh, through the user interface that they have and most of the arrows in here would then work uh, across this uh, x road interface and then the doctors can provide their services based on this input of course, uh, many of these service models for specific risk scores for dealing with the uh, screening uh, procedures, etc., they have yet to be determined uh, and and specified, like what to do with uh, exactly which uh, patient segment or group, right? Whom to invite for which uh, screening processes? Uh, I heard just first time in here that you could actually do all the imaging in one go for all the different cancers. I don't know if this is a very good uh, approach or even possible to do, but conceptually that is the question that identify high risk patients and then offer better services to them. Um, so the focus really uh, in a way where we still are struggling in the implementations and the conceptualization of all of, all of this is this computer environment where we provide this secure computation and um, opportunity, uh, we envision that this is a area where we can uh, install these different apps, so to speak, that uh, do these calculations, medical uh, decision making, and they, uh, by the standards, have to be this IVDR medical device regulation uh, compliant CE marked uh, software devices. Uh, which is, of course, a big, uh, big challenge. So coming up with a proper strategy, how to make these CE marked uh, devices is, is one really big question and, and, and challenge to us still to date. And the second is then uh, the lab, the medical uh, service provider has to run those instances and then provide the insights uh, to the medical field to the doctors so the build-up of the of the environment and the role of the lab is crucial in here uh, just very briefly we envision that what we can how we can install these apps uh, is that they are um, either well most likely they are some docker containers so that we can really launch them as as whatever they require a compute environment so the containerized um, uh, medical devices that is the simplest thought that we have at the moment and that of course would require that we have those dockerized or containerized medical devices available <clears throat> 
the two main services are indeed the polygenic uh, risk scores, primarily not the single genetic variants, but the, the more complex risk scores, and the second is the pharmacogenetic warnings. So to implement these uh, pieces of software that determine the genetic variants, uh, allele variants, and then provide the uh, um, specialized uh, um, some sort of warnings to the doctors that because of uh, variant of that gene, maybe for this drug, uh, you have either poor metabolizer or, or rapid metabolizer. Um, of course, this knowledge would have to come from these international research, so we are heavily relying on these uh, research databases. Polygenic risk scores, I believe that uh, uh, most of the uh, listeners in here know, it's just the assumption that your genetic composition across many, many different uh, sites in the genome uh, may, you have, may have more protective or more um, disease susceptible variants that across these different sites, you kind of get the distributions, usually kind of normal distribution like distributions, but you can identify these high risk individuals and you can really then assess how these high risk individuals, how much higher the risk is and come up with the strategies how to, how to deal with these high risk individuals. Um, but this is the exactly the question how the medical system defines those processes, when they can intervene, when they can better uh, scrutinize those individuals, where is the cost benefit in this case. <clears throat> medical doctors are really eager uh, and waiting for some pharmacogenetic um, panels, because now they can order it one gene, based panel or, or drug specific panels, they are quite costly. So in our case, all the DNA um, has been genotyped for these 200,000 individuals at the low cost research um, chips, basically, that uh, measure maybe perhaps 700,000 to 1 million variants. And because in Estonia, we have also the some 2,500 uh, full genomes, then we can impute um, the major variants also in between those measured uh, sites. And based on these uh, low cost genetic data, we uh, try to figure out how to provide these uh, um, cost effective services. So basically across one gene, you can have multiple uh, sites, uh, SNPs that determine um, the allele we can call them star reliefs based on the literature and then provide these uh, um, warnings on specific um, drug because that's something where we foresee that uh, it's useful only at the, uh, at the time when doctor starts to uh, prescribe some drug or select a choice of drug out of the multiple ones that that in that case, uh, we can provide some additional insight uh, based on the allele variants of these metabolizing genes, for example. Lily will talk more about this um, tomorrow. So we are collaborating with Lily Milani group on this uh, software development and the process. Um, um, currently, we are foreseeing that by 2023, we can demonstrate um, convincingly that the full cycle that I just described works in principle, that we have a prototype, well, all the bits and pieces in place uh, where we can install also these uh, decision-making um, apps or, or computational um, algorithms, and uh, that they would be fully integrated to the medical system. And then after that, of course, the question will remain, how can we bring in more uh, services to the market? Which ones are, are useful ones? And how the medical system would be able to utilize those? So we are two years into the project. Uh, so we, we know, uh, basically, we, ha we, we have implemented uh, major, uh, major prototypes already. So we can uh, be quite convinced that we can do the IT uh, that works at the end. But the, the, 
the legal side, uh, the, the services side, the cost uh, of the future services, these have to be determined. Plus, um, the question is still there a little bit about the CE marking marked uh, medical devices, the software pieces that are medical devices. So these are the last uh, small hurdles in, in, our, in our way. Um, so just uh, to recap these challenges is that what we are really trying to do is that we take these low cost array-based technologies, low cost uh, blood sample collection, DNA extraction, um, research data. Um, in the big picture, I think it, the cost is about 56 euros per individual. But then the question is how to make all this um, medical value out of that. And, and we do need these electronic decision support systems that, that work as software, as medical devices. So there have to be some process for manufacturing such pieces of software properly. And then the medical system uh, readiness, of course, is also a, a good question. But I know that uh, they are really eager for the pharmacogenetic services. And in the cases of risks, they ask um, who would pay for modified uh, screening programs, et cetera. So the ministries have to come up with a good uh, plan for, for this. Um, and I think this wraps up my, my brief overview uh, presentation. Um, we are located in, in this nice, very shiny new building, uh, got ready just one year ago, uh, computer, computational sciences, statistics, uh, business and the economy. We are in here and we are collaborating with this biobank and, and, uh, and uh, other partners. So basically we have put together a team of software developers who is uh, developing these different aspects of the infrastructure, the architecture and everything.